Today we are field testing this Lucas Acrel watercolor set. It is a 12 pan student grade watercolor set. So keep watching. Recently we did a swatch and unbox for these watercolors. I happen to have the swatch guide here. So now we are going to put them to a true test. We're going to put them to the watercolor field test. And first we have to get them out of their adorable little sleeve. I can just do this. Ah, all right. And two of them have popped out. That's kind of good though, because that means that once you've used these up, you can replace these little pans with whatever pans you want. You can even do, <laughs> I say as I get it all over the place, self-filled pans like this hot mess here. So the first thing I'm gonna need to do is I'm going to need to erase this line art and adhere it to this masonite sheet. I went ahead and grabbed a daisy palette, a cup of clean water, and my brushes. And I will try to place this tiny adorable palette where you guys can see it and try to get my cable where you guys cannot. And some of you might know her, some of you might not, but this cute tiny peach is Kara, one of two main characters from my all ages free to read webcomic seven inch Kara. And it is all in watercolor cause I am out of my mind. And you guys can check that out at seveninchkara.com or regularly keep up with the adventures from the safety and comfort of your own Tumblr dashboard by following it at seveninchkara.tumblr.com. And you guys can find a link link to that in the description below and it would really mean a lot to me if you took a moment to check it out you might see something you like certainly if you like my art you will enjoy that so just finishing putting some washi tape down on my fabriano cold press cotton rag watercolor paper only the finest up in casa de la Nados. wait Casa de la Natto Soup. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to each of these half pans. Go ahead and get them activated. And fill up one of my daisies with some water because we're probably gonna get things really dirty up in here. Now for step one, you're like a dream come true. We're gonna mix some yellow ochre over here in that daisy palette with some scarlet red. Don't want too much scarlet red. Just enough for us to get a skin tone. And that is a little bit too light. So I'm gonna let that dry, but I'm gonna go ahead and mix it darker. Now, one of my concerns, two of my, I have two concerns for the Lucas Aquel watercolors. One, full of, probably full of optical brighteners, as often so evidenced by my opacity test. Now, of course, there are some naturally opaque watercolors out there, and yellow ochre is indeed one of them. But so many of these colors, are, you can see where they aren't repelled by the marker, they're opaque. That tends to lead to muddy mixing. So we're gonna have to get in there, get the colors we want, and then get, 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 get out. So I'm going to try to not fiddle fart around. I'm gonna try to mix as accurately as possible. And while we wait for that to dry, I'm gonna go in chaw and grab just the wee bitest, the littlest bit of blue, which is still kind of intense. Go ahead and do the shadow on the tops of her eyes. And that ultramarine is a really nice color. I'll go ahead and zoomity zoom on in. We're gonna do another application on her skin. Oh, it's still not really 
the color I had in mind, although it is closer. And y'all are my witness in all this mixing and mashing. Y'all are gonna be my witness as to how much it takes for us to get a wash color that we like. Now, Lucas makes kind of a range of watercolor and I do believe this is their lowest range, probably comparable with Cotman. And I think I paid under $20 for this 20, 12 piece set. And I ordered it from Jerry's Artorama and you guys will be able to find a link in the description below. So fear not, I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I never leave you guys hanging. And this comes with magenta. And I don't know that I can resist not doing a fill with magenta. All right, a little bit of unintended wet into wet. So I'm just gonna dab that up and let all of this dry. Okay, so had a little bit of bleeding there in the face, nothing fatal. Gonna go ahead, hopefully, 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 we've mixed our skin tone dark enough. Mm, still isn't as dark as I would have liked, but it's getting there at least. I mean, at least now it looks like a different color from the paper. And Kara's face picked up a lot of color from the sweater. Let's just call that local color though. Now that this has had a chance to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do another layer. And if I can't get it, it doesn't really seem to get any darker when we layer like that. So I'm going to mix our skin tone darker because we do need some contrast here. And that's always been my problem with cheap watercolors, like Cotman, like these Lucas, is just how much you have to mix just to get your colors dark enough to be the right colors. And I know a lot of people who advocate for student watercolors that, you know, I, I don't know, I don't ever see them mention that, which is frustrating because you're actually going to learn to over mix your colors. And while that's not necessarily the end of the world, it's still something you have to train yourself out of. I feel like they just handle so much, so differently from regular watercolors that it's a bit of a trick to be like, oh yeah, student grade is great because you're, you're learning, but you're learning a lot of bad traits that you're gonna have to teach yourself out of. So I'm gonna let this layer dry before we do anything else. All right, let's see if this time we can get the skin tone darker. I went and mixed it again. So hopefully, there we go, that's a little bit better. And I think um, in terms of mixing skin tone, I'm gonna stop it there. And then, and I'm gonna show you guys already how muddy that water is. And it's only been like three colors, yellow ochre, which is already kind of opaque, yellow ochre, uh, scarlet, which is also somewhat opaque, and then magenta. And I also wanna show you guys the well where I had the magenta and it dried up. You guys see that white ring? That's optical brighteners. That's what we get when we buy student grade. Not every time, but often enough that it always makes me hesitant. And it makes doing these inexpensive art supply reviews kind of exhausting <laughs> because I do kind of get tired of that. So we do not have a purple. We don't even have like a, ooh, gross. Did y'all, okay, so I ro rolled my brush over the magenta and it pretty much cratered on me. We don't have a violet or a red violet. So I'm going to mix magenta with ultramarine blue. And it's gonna give us this kind of a weak color. So with this set, it really seems like all of our mixes are going to be end up being very weak. 
which is bad because when we layer colors, it's gonna act as a glaze instead of just like a thick application of color. And it's gonna reactivate those other layers and um, possibly cause for muddy effects rather than clean effects. Okay, so that layer has had a chance to dry. I'm gonna go in, grab a little bit of scarlet, and again with these student watercolors, a little bit in, okay, so when you activate it and you dab, it'll end up picking up like a lot. So then you have to water it down again. But we're applying a little bit of blush here to her cheeks and to the palms of her hands. And I'll let that dry and then we'll apply the skin shade. Okay, so her skin has had a chance to dry. I'm going to use a br smaller brush and go ahead and start applying the skin shadows. As you guys can see, it's not really dark enough. So we're gonna remix. Oh, so this is not good, but kind of cool looking. It's pretty, that's where the two colors separated out. And it's not necessarily bad either, but if you're trying to mix two colors and get an even color, that's not something you wanna see. However, there are plenty of Daniel Smith colors that do that intentionally, or when you mix two shades, they do that intentionally. So it can be a good thing. It's basically one of those things you have to know that's what you're getting. When I did the Cotman field test, which you guys can watch by clicking here, not on here, but clicking this card, um, I had most of my colors separated out like that in my swatches. Okay, let's hope that is dark enough for, it actually, as it dries, it actually looks dark enough for the most part. Um, I think the only real problem is going to be on our face where I can go over it again. So that's actually not such a bad thing. Let's go ahead then and start working on our shirt again. And I tried to do a little blending out. Now I'm gonna grab an even more saturated version of the color and see if I can sort of do some wet into wet with it. It looks like it's not really gonna make much of a difference. So we're gonna have to let that dry before we can do another layer. That's if we wanna do another layer. I actually wanna do some shading on this butter. And just given how this has been handling, I'm a little concerned about that. Cast shadow from the hair and then let it all dry. So, and I'm gonna pick this up so you guys can see that purple, um, that sort of red-violet we mixed, it actually spidered out, which is another thing that I noticed tends to happen with student grade watercolors is that there's a lot of feathering and bleeding because there's so many, I guess there's such a chalky surface to it. Um, it basically acts as like a fresh watercolor ground and absorbs the pigment. <sighs> like, <laughs> it's hard to explain, but it feathers out, which is another problem I have with these sort of inexpensive student grade watercolors and it's kind of funny because I literally just finished the Banyo field test video and I'm having more problems with the Lucas set than I had with the Banyo set. Now I was handling the Banyo watercolors a little bit differently. I think I had too high expectations for these watercolors. And really they're not, they're not so bad. Um, if you are insistent on buying inexpensive student grade watercolors and it's up between these Lucas watercolors and a Cotman set, 
I would say, I guess, go with these Lucas watercolors because I found the cotton and set to be uh, very glycerin heavy and it left kind of like an oil slick effect. Not really, but there's like a shiny layer. And I had difficulty building up color intensity as well, which is also a problem with this set, but it was more of a problem with the other set. And I also find this is a better set of um, mixing colors, colors that I can achieve other colors that I need. And I think the Lucas Aquel are also a little less expensive than Windsor Newton Cotton. So that's another reason to perhaps go with these over Cotton. So I'm gonna grab some, it looks like ultramarine blue. And hopefully when I layer the two, it'll look purple. I can't exactly blend it out because I'm afraid it will wash away some of my color, but like with the Banyo set, I know I can probably layer over this layer with the magenta and it will give me more of the color I really want. Even without that additional layer on top of this though, it does sort of work, but part of it is it seems to be drawing kind of muted and chalky. So they give you all these colors that should, in theory, be very intense. Like magenta is a very intense color in general. And then in this set, it ends up with so many optical brighteners in it that the color dries very muted and dull. Which is a shame if you were hoping for kind of an intense almost CMYK inspired. In fact, I think there is also a cyan and there's definitely a yellow. So sort of a CMYK inspired watercolor set. You don't really see those too often. A few years ago, it was all the rage for people to claim they did all their color mix mixing using CMYK since that's kind of a printing palette. Of course, it is very easy to prove that you need more colors than CMYK. But it would still be interesting to see a watercolor palette inspired by CMYK printing process. So I'm going to let that dry. So as you guys can probably see, that ultramarine dried very muted to kind of a dull purple. We're going to attempt to overlay some more magenta on it and see if that kind of helps. And now I have to quit messing with the sweater because it's basic, basically at the point where I'm getting to not like the, uh, the illustration so much anymore because I've kind of fiddled around with the sweater for so long. And I am going to go ahead and activate the cyan, mostly because I am curious to see how it handles. I'm also going to activate sepia because I'm gonna need that once this layer dries for her hair and her eyes. Running a little bit of a risk here, but since there are no areas that are wet that are adjacent to anything that I'm trying to paint, I'm going to go on into her arms and do a little bit more there. And hopefully that will dry fairly fast. So what do you guys think about the Lucas watercolors so far? Are these comparable to what you're used to? Let me know in the comments below and if there are any brands that you can recommend, any hidden gems, let me know that as well. Always interested in seeing what's out there and hearing what you guys have to recommend. I've tested quite a few different watercolor brands here on the channel and over at natosoup.blogspot.com but I know there's still a lot that I haven't yet tested. 
<laughs> Sorry. So I'm trying to go ahead and mix up a cyan to do for the background. Grab a little bit more. And I'm going to have to try to work carefully and quick because I do actually want to go more saturated than this, but I have all these little areas that I need to work around. I'm working with a small brush just so I can get in there. The problem is it's, it's kind of a dry night tonight, so I have to work before my watercolor dries and leaves streaks. And this is definitely a brand that I think will leave streaks. There's also a Lucas, I think it's like 1882, which is supposed to be their nicer range. And I haven't had an opportunity to try those out. I actually don't have, for nicer watercolors, I don't have as much experience testing out different brands just because there's a big price prohibition. It's just quite an investment to make try to keep it affordable. Of course, if you want to see me review those nicer brands, one of the ways you can help make that happen is to join me in my art nerd community. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can buy a year long subscription in one fell swoop from my Gumroad account, or you can take it on a month by month basis over at Patreon. And if you can only afford to do one month, that's perfectly all right. And you can probably most easily do that by tipping me over on coffee. And I'll make sure to put links for all of those down below. But those are the best ways to ensure that I'll be able to review the brands you want to see reviewed here on the channel. Of course, I'm always open to suggestions. So even if you don't have the funds to help support, I definitely want to hear what you guys want to see here. So working wet into wet, I'm building up kind of a variegated wash, I guess rather a uh, graduated wash would be the correct term for that. And then I'm going to prop up the back so it blends downward with an eraser and let everything have a chance to dry. All right guys, so it is time for our next layer. Reaching that uh, good old finish line here. And I had activated sepia. So let us pick up some sepia. Sepia, come on down. Or come on brown. It's like wet right there. Right where I want to wet, rest, west, rest my hand. Oh well. Still not super happy with the sweater. It definitely looks muddy and kind of poorly handled. If I weren't doing this for a field test, if I were just seriously use, oh, got out of line a little bit there. If I were just seriously using these watercolors, I probably, ooh, 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 it's bleeding all over the place. Let me see if I can show you guys. Oh gosh, see where it's, bleeding into her face there because we probably put too many layers or because we put layers on her face period basically it seems like it's acting as sort of another watercolor ground and soaking up adjacent colors especially if adjacent colors are fairly watery and this sort of shenanigans is why i really kind of have a problem with so many student grade watercolors. I definitely think if you're just starting out, you shouldn't necessarily invest a whole lot of money into watercolor because it might, it just might not be for you. I know a lot of artists who do acrylics who just really can't wrap their heads around watercolor. And hey, I can't wrap my head around acrylics. 
So it's all about whether or not you like to work light to dark or dark to light, or if you wanna be able to go back and forth. With watercolor, you can't really do that. And for me, that's okay because my brain can do light to dark, but it can't do dark to light as well. But a lot of student grade watercolors just really don't perform very well. A lot of them have a lot of kind of fundamental problems, which I could see ruining someone's enjoyment of watercolor just point blank, which is a shame because it's a great medium and it's great for illustration and it can be a very expressive medium. And it's just a shame to see someone's enjoyment get ruined because the materials fight them the whole time. And I definitely think this little Lucas pocket set, especially if you're trying to paint something larger and more involved, is definitely gonna fight you. Like I said with the banyo set, or the banyo set, if you're just doing this to do character sketches, if you work really light, if you don't do a lot of layers, if you don't do a lot of blending effects, this is probably okay. Um, there are cheaper sets on the market or comparable priced sets on the market that handle a little bit better. Um, the water, no, Primo Marketing Watercolor Confection set in the tropicals, which usually goes for about $15 on Amazon. Very similar color gamut. You guys can check out the swatch and unbox or the unboxing swatch and the field test here on this channel. Um, I think that handles better than this set at the same price point. But this set is very compact. If you don't like the colors, you can toss the colors. So maybe not the worst way to get started or the worst little stocking stuffer. If you have an artsy kid or an artsy relative who um, isn't yet serious, but maybe could get serious with the watercolor medium, this might be a nice little present so long as you kind of forewarn them of how this is gonna happen. So I'm going to let this fully dry and we'll have our final talk then. All right, guys, these Lucas watercolors have had a chance to dry. I found them to be a little bit more opaque than the Cotman watercolors, which I would say are comparable to these. I found them to be a little bit frustrating to deal with, but the price point isn't bad and they're a little bit more affordable than Cotman. So if you, if it's like a one-to-one -one comparison and yeah, you're gonna buy one or you're gonna buy the other, I would recommend the Lucas over Cotman watercolors. However, these are not my favorite affordable 12 pan set. As I said earlier in the video, I would actually recommend the Prima Marketing Watercolor Confections Tropical set over this this set here. This set is all plastic. The pans are not glued and they don't stick firmly. So if you turn your palette upside down, some of them will sort of fall out. You can remedy that with some washi tape on the bottom. Uh, they are, like I sort of hinted at, removable. You could, once these are used up, replace them with your favorite colors or hey, you could replace them immediately with your favorite colors. So if you do have this set, I would hold on to the palette and use it for other things later on. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you'll check out my other watercolor videos here on this channel and my watercolor playlist. And if you're interested in learning how to watercolor or if you're looking for advice, tips, tricks, techniques, or even new tools, I recommend you head on over to nettosoup.blogspot.com and check out my watercolor basics series. Thank you guys again for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye guys.